Welcome everybody to our next tutorial session. In this session we will be covering the automatic monitoring services and templates for a basic noise project. So if you've watched the previous videos you've uh, now uh, gone through the overview of both Svanet remote communication services and the automatic monitoring services. In this video we're gonna show you a basic noise project, so a project where you have a 307 streaming data to Svannet or a 277, 279, uh, you name it. And uh, we're gonna show and highlight features that we think are very cool and very useful and uh, we're gonna try to teach them to you and uh, then you can use that knowledge uh, that you gain from this tutorial to build your own project per your own preferences. So we have now entered the project. You should by now recognize this project as we've been using this for our tutorial session. And you can straight away see here in the top that you have four bars. So we have the project description bar, the map bar, the charts bar, and the events bar. Now, how did these get there? Well, we added them previously, right? So you have full control of what kind of panels you want to be able to see here and what they are supposed to do, their names, anything. And the first bar I'd like to talk about is the project description bar. This is basically sort of like the front page or the title of your project. Um, obviously now with the automatic monitoring services you can place it anywhere you want but per default we would say that this is the top sort of bar that you see when you enter a project and it's pretty cool because for example you can upload any type of picture here uh, so for example if you go here and click this button then you can upload an arbitrary picture uh, that fits your project better and then uh, obviously you can add some you can go here so this is the universal button for locally updating the panel uh, and you can change everything so 307 svanet demo the project location is svantec hq in poland and the project description would be hello world this is a noise project and you know it, it automatically updates here. Uh, if you think this is too big, you know, you remember from the previous one, you, you go here into the gear boxes, go into the edit mode and you can drag it out. You want to have an automated, nicely cropped one, then you go here, that will extend the picture. But if you want to have this picture smaller, you just crop like this. It automatically responds to that, go out from the edit mode, voila, you have this now. So that would be the project description, not much more to it. Uh, yeah. So the next off is the map. So map is pretty self-explanatory. However, there's more to it than you would actually think. So um, let me first go through the graphics. Now, uh, by default, when you're in day mode, so the uh, white mode, uh, you will have this sort of map view, like in Google Maps. If you go to the the night mode so the black mode as you can do with this button here it will go into the satellite mode right so I, I like to have it like this because it's newer for me so it looks neater uh, but that's that's the first part again here you can as as uh, as in the previous one go to the gear boxes templates edit mode you would like to have your map bigger well that's how you do it right um, and uh, there is one more thing that you would probably notice. The, we have our marking. Here's our station. We only have one station, right? So it's placed here based on the GPS coordinates it places itself. But a question that probably will come up, well, how do I get a value here? Well, let me introduce you to a new panel that is called Live Data. So the Live Data panel is not going to be on in any project by default because we have been converting projects from the old Svannet to the new Svannet and the live data panel did not exist in the old Svannet. So again, gearboxes, the main sort of feature of the automatic monitoring service templates. And you see right here, you have a panel called live data. So you must turn this on. Whoops, and then, uh, well, let's drag it up to the map so that we can see it. So it is now up here. Let's go out from here and straight away, you will notice a change to the map as well. So you see how in the map suddenly, 
we have a reading. Well, this reading is connected to the live data panel here. So you can go in the live data and choose whether you want to have the LAQ level, you know, the LZ peak, whatever. By choosing the value in the live data panel right here, you're setting the value inside here. And you see how responsive this is? So it's not longer showing you the last downloaded data, it's showing you the live data from the station. The live data panel is pretty extensive. So if you go here into this three dot sign, you will see starting from the top, three different layouts. We are in the basic uh, list layout, but if we click here now, you'll see how this suddenly changed. Now, this will then give you the opportunity to see both the statuses of the station and the live data. Furthermore, there is this panel where you have a different design of that, right? So this is cool in a way that you can see what's happening to your station so that it's charging, no warnings, it's on mains, 75% of the memory is free, the instrument clock and the measurement point information is here, plus the the value, the, the data that we have here. Obviously, that is also going to respond to what we choose to change it to. And finally, you have this little picture of your station, which you can actually change for, for that station. So if you go here again, we can, well, change it to this picture again. Well, I, and not in this case, it must be smaller. So let's try that again. Here we go. Uh, I've resized it. So voila, you can have that inside here as well. So if you have more than one station, then you can switch between that. Uh, we're gonna show you that in the uh, vibration video, how, how that changes. So basically, if you want to have a live data reading here, you can uh, go here and change what you want to have as a, as a view. And also you can actually change the noise thresholds or the acceleration thresholds. What is meant by that is if we look now, we have a steady level of around 44 dB on the LAQ. Well, maybe if we want to have the orange start at, let's say 41 dB, and then we'll have the red start at 44. You can see how, you know, we have now 40, 40 uh, 1.3, but when it passes the red, it, it when it passes 44, the red threshold, it, it will it will go red. So you can change those those things as well. And that is a brand new panel which you have not seen in the old standard version. So this this is sort of interconnected in a way, and we're gonna go through it a little bit further when we are doing our. Um, tutorial session on a vibration project. So if you want to have more information on the live data panel, stay tuned for the vibration project um, tutorial where we're gonna go through some, some uh, of the other functions. So finally, we can proceed to the charts panel. Now, this is probably the panel that you're gonna be using the most, uh, seeing how, uh, you know, it shows very valuable data. So as you remember from the previous video, we have two types of settings that define the date range. Uh, the one global setting is defined here. In the templates, configure panels, you have a default time range, which is a global setting that is valid for all the charts, all the different panels inside of the project until you change it locally. So as you can see here, we have last month activated, but if I now go into this chart and I click, I will be able to change the time range locally. Now the aggregation step is also set to go auto. You can change that. That will obviously affect the Y axis and how it's going to be displayed. And the very cool and requested feature of this is the ability to straight away export that to CSV. So by clicking here, you get a CSV file straight away with the data being shown. So basically uh, what you see is what you get graph with the data in CSV format. You can still uh, utilize the zoom tool if you want to zoom in on a selection and uh, one a very uh, important parameter which we did not have and was constantly requested is the ability to select the data you want to see yourself so uh, previously it was always three parameters now you can define whatever parameter you want to have here apply that sorry and then 
voila you have it here you have the ability to still change the colors if you don't like the default color that goes goes you can you can change that so you can do whatever color you want uh, and uh, and yeah and that is the chart panel you can add as many chart panels as you want so again you have to go here uh, add new panel charts chart to whatever add and uh, well that's gonna place itself low but let's let's put it a little bit higher next to the old charts and and you define here again what you want to see perhaps it's only LAQ level and uh, also a time range so it will automatically set itself for the default global setting but perhaps you want to have it only for the last hour well there you go so it's a very useful feature very uh, very popular and uh, we have removed the, the distinction between the hour chart and the month chart now you're in control you're deciding what chart and what kind of chart you want to see so that would be the chart function we also have a tables function so if you again go to the gearboxes add a new panel and then define that you want to see a table you can create your table uh, again let's pull it a little bit higher here maybe before events and you can go here and define what kind of table you want uh, of what the results so let's say you want to have the laq but maybe only for the last hour or so uh, and then we add that to the table and you have your table here with the date and time and the levels right here so that is very useful for the ones that would like to have this in table view instead of a uh, chart view finally I would like to go through the events so the event view is similar to what we had before. You remember how we had the event view, but with uh, a little difference. So as you can see here, we have the ability to select events and we have type of events. Now we can see that the value will define what type of event this is based on how we have set up our station. You can see here that we have the vibration event, device tilt event, and then we have a threshold event with a small marker indicating that there is a wave a file here to be heard. So you can you can choose which one you want to show so perhaps we want to show this device tilt so we click this checkbox and that will give us all the values here. We can do that for this let's say we want to see this three uh, levels and then we can switch between them freely like this there's also a filtering function so perhaps you only want to see the sound pressure level uh, so the threshold the real events and then you can define even the values here so you want to see only those that uh, go above 87 well there's only four of them right so it's you're again pretty free to do whatever you want but basically when you have selected them and there is an audio event downloaded you can also listen to them inside here so you just click here and that will play it I, um, I don't think I'm sharing my audio here so you won't be hearing that well so what we have done now is configured our project we have our you know small window here big map window live data two types of charts one table and then an event view and the final step of this we either keep it like this or we decide we want to export that as a report. So the report jumps down here. We open that up and we have everything in one neat report. Everything is scaling to itself. Well, perhaps the table was a little bit too long. Uh, shouldn't have so much data there. Uh, we have all the events that we actually picked and you have your finished report. And uh, obviously you can also add uh, text so if you want to go and uh, write some notes so for example you add a new panel and you have the text panel and uh, you add that it will be taken there instantaneously you add some text and then we go here yeah click here to start editing and and just knock yourself out this tutorial is now concluded thank you for watching thank you very much for watching so as indicated by the text file here this tutorial is concluded 
thank you for watching stay tuned for our vibration project tutorial which is gonna come soon thank you very much